Mr. Karolinski, Mr. Minister, uh, dear ambassadors, excellences, generals, general Hodges, commandant of the Lithuanian Military Academy, all organizers and participants of uh, this great event. First of all, I would like to use this uh, opportunity and to thank the uh, Lithuanian Military Academy for organizing such a I would say meaningful uh, event here and for hosting it and for organizing together with the uh, Lithuanian National Defense Foundation. As well, I'm really glad uh, to see so many familiar faces, familiar faces of uh, great experts, great experts in the uh, Baltic security and uh, defense area who came here to share experience and uh, ideas uh, is, uh, with us here and uh, it's not only about Lithuania, it's about uh, all three Baltic states. Um, also, I think it is a very good opportunity to take a look a little bit over horizon and uh, to explore and uh, discuss challenges we are all Unfortunately, unfortunately, going to change and to, to face in the nearest future. And I'm talking definitely about doctrinal challenges, about conceptual challenges, and some other challenges. And uh, without any doubt, who can be a better place for such a meaningful uh, discussion than this place, uh, Lithuanian Military Academy, where we are developing our future military and civilian views. Dear colleagues, uh, reflecting on uh, achievements, <clears throat> on our achievements, on Lithuanian achievements, while adapting Western uh, military experience, I believe it's uh, very worth to mention that uh, we here in Lithuania and more broadly in uh, all three Baltic states had a quite unique starting point for our reforms. In contrast uh, to some other uh, countries, other ones, uh, and uh, newcomers of uh, NATO, who are already reforming existing systems or reforming already existing uh, existing defense systems, uh, in the early 1990s, we in Lithuania had uh, to start development of our armed forces from zero, from scratch. And uh, I should say, at the same time, in the very beginning, already having strong determination to build defense establishment according to Western standards, according to Western values, was uh, quite beneficial not only for us, but at the same time, uh, it was a very clear message and request to our supporters, to our advisors, we came here in the early stages uh, of development of uh, our armed forces to help us and uh, who have been really instrumental uh, talking about our success and I would say not only instrumental, they were vital and decisive for our success. During the last uh, almost uh, three decades here in Lithuania, and uh, I believe more broadly, in the Baltic states, uh, developing and uh, permanently transforming our defense establishments, we succeeded not only adapt and integrate the great experience of uh, our Western allies and partners, but also to develop and accumulate our own experience of the frontier state military. In addition, it has been very, very useful for us to participate together with our allies and partners in different peace operations and missions, where common experience was uh, gathered as well. And today, we are very generously sharing our knowledge and experience with our allies, with our partners, and with our developing partners. Since 2004, for the last 15 years, being important contributors for security and defense of the NATO eastern flank, 
we are continuously developing indeed holistic approach. And uh, we are in fact developing this holistic uh, approach to the challenges we face today, including all the possible domains. In addition, as well, we have to properly develop, I would say, orchestrate and balance our quite modest national means, our modest national capabilities, while synchronizing our efforts with our NATO allies, and in fact, with the ultimate goal to deter our enemy. And if deterrence fails, maybe first responders in our possible conflict. And to be ready to face the fact of initially, I would say, unfavorable for us, radio of uh, capabilities and forces. We're not only relatively modest in size and our military capabilities. Baltic militaries are very land-centric or land-heavy. We're like on essential parts of the classical and traditional defense establishments. Talking about LOC, uh, <coughs> range fires, talking about air defense, talking about uh, decisive maritime and uh, air capabilities and assets. And as well, we're quite limited in a strategic and uh, very often operational depth. On the other hand, it is very good reason to be creative and innovative while adapting an integrated experience of our allies into national defense planning, and uh, national uh, operational planning, development of uh, capabilities, educating our military and civilian leaders, exercising our units and training our personnel, and without any doubt, seeing ourselves as a part of the bigger picture of the NATO family. Dear colleagues, to summarize very briefly, with the great support of our <coughs> Western uh, allies and partners, in a very short period of time, we succeeded to achieve tremendous progress and results while adapting and developing our armed forces for the present and future challenges. And that's why today we can generously share our experience accumulated with our allies, uh, with our partners, and with our developing partners. Being the frontier state with a limited capabilities and uh, boarding time, we have to be very creative and innovative, as I said, to properly develop our national defense establishment, our capabilities, our regional cooperation, and our ability to act as a part of a NATO alliance, providing both common capabilities and the host nation support for our allies. And I hope that this conference, the Baltic Military Conference 2019, will serve for us as a good forum, as a good platform to reflect on our achievements as well to, as to discuss possible future conceptual and doctrinal challenges. I wish you all a great success in the coming two days. Thank you.